So the big question everyone wants to know, is this bow worth it? Should you buy it? Should you upgrade from a VTM, a Ventum, or even an older bow for that matter? I don't think it's worth the upgrade. You're not gonna notice a ton. I've had this 2024 Alpha X for a week now. I've put four to 500 arrows through it. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a rundown on whether or not you should buy this bow, if you should upgrade from a Ventum, a VTM, or any other bow brand for that matter to this Alpha X. So stay tuned, we're gonna run some arrows through the chrono, and then I'm gonna give you my final opinion. Quick rundown on the bow, we've got the Spot Hog Fast Eddy XL with the double stack pins in it. Great sight, I'm loving it so far, it holds true. I had this on my VTM 34 and I love it. We have the Ultra Rest Integrate by Hoyt. This rest integrates right in with Hoyt's Integrate system. Super good rest, I've liked it. You've got micro adjustments, makes it super easy to tune. Loving that so far. Down here, we've got the all new 2024 Hoyt Ghost Sticks. I've got a 10 inch stabilizer that's coming off the front in bourbon color. Back here, I've got the Hoyt four arrow double piece quiver, pretty standard. I ran that on my VTM 34 last year. And then these arrows are a 500 grain setup, four fletched. That is a quick rundown on this bow. Now let's get some arrows through it. I have two different weights I'm gonna be slinging through the chrono. This is my hunting setup, 501 grains. This has arrow wrap, four fletch, and of course, a Luminoc on it. We're gonna put three arrows through the chrono, 70 pounds, 29 inch draw length. Let's see what speeds we're getting out of this 501 grain setup. 280, not bad. So if you go watch my VTM video from last year, I'm pretty sure I slung some through the chrono and I was shooting a 476 grain setup at about 285 feet per second. So that's a big improvement if 282, that's not bad. 279, now we've got a 353 grain setup that we're gonna put through. See what type of speeds we'll get on this. I'm thinking around 320. 325, nice. Speeds aren't terrible. Now, the new Matthews is zooming from what I've seen. 348, it's a fast bow. 324, we're around that 324, 325 range. So I haven't watched any chronos on the new Matthews lift, but that bow's supposed to be fast. I might get that bow, we'll see. 324, so we're right around 324, 325 range. Now I will say the Alpha X is a little faster than my VTM. I know on paper, they're actually pretty similar. It's not anything crazy. I don't think it's gonna make the difference between killing an animal and not, but it is a little faster. So my honest opinion on this bow, I love it, super dead in hand. New cam system feels great. Draw feels great. The cams don't dump at all. Solid back wall. The grip is probably my favorite thing on this bow. This is something I left out, but I'm loving the new Hoyt Ghost Sticks. This is a huge, huge, improvement over last year's bow. So the other ghost sticks, if you have any experience with them, they just screw in and they come unscrewed and they're really annoying. These actually have a physical knob on them and they're spring loaded. So you can put them in different positions. So you got your stand position there and they even have a store position, which is incredibly nice. Again, all spring loaded. Another amazing feature is Hoyt put this little knob on the cam right here. So when you set your bow down, you're not scuffing your cam up. I know with my VTM, biggest problem I had was my cam was scuffed up and then my string was starting to get scuffed. That was really annoying. And depending on where you are, if you screw your string up, your hunt might be blown. So that's a big improvement in my opinion. Keeping that cam off the ground is super important. Keeps it out of the mud, keeps things from getting jammed up in there. If you have a VTM or an RX-7 where you have the older go sticks, you can replace those go sticks with this new go stick system. It's a little more expensive. I believe it's like $120, but it's well worth the upgrade in my opinion. Is this bow worth it? Should you buy it? Should you upgrade from a VTM, a Ventum, or even an older bow for that matter? This is what I tell anyone when it comes to any new bow. Go shoot it, go put some arrows through it. Find what you like. Don't buy a bow solely because of the brand. Don't buy a bow solely because an influencer or someone you watch on YouTube shoots it. Shoot what you like, shoot what's comfortable in your hand. For me, I personally have a hard time dialing in which bow I like the most out of all the bow brands because I think they all do stuff so well. I think a lot of people in the archery space get tunnel vision and think one brand is better than the other. And granted, a Matthews might feel 
better in your hand than a Hoyt, and a Hoyt might feel better in your hand than a Matthews. It's all person to person basis, it's all opinion. So take what you see on social media with a grain of salt, go shoot what you like. And truthfully, I think the worst thing people do is they buy a bow based on the opinions of others, based on what other shooters are shooting. Any new bow is gonna get the job done. You can go buy a $500 bow from Shields and you can go out in the field and kill a deer the next day. I think a lot of times we get this analysis paralysis on what's best, you know, what setup do I need to run? What setup's gonna make me most successful? When the reality is you just need to get a bow, get out, get some reps, Find a bow that's comfortable in your hand that you can shoot consistent with and go with that bow. Now, if you have a VTM or a Ventum, I don't think it's worth the upgrade. You're not gonna notice a big difference. Speed maybe a little bit, the grip is different, but is it worth forking out the extra cash? That's gonna have to be a question you ask yourself. I will say if you can sell your VTM from last year and get a decent amount of money, and you know, fork up three, 400 bucks to get the new one, yeah, it might be worth it for you. But truthfully, even though this bow has a redesigned riser, there's not a whole lot you're missing out on from this and the VTM, so I would say, maybe hold off till next year, that VTM is gonna last you three, four, five, six years. You're not gonna need a new bow. So I personally bought this bow so I can make content around it. I think it's good to have something fresh on the channel. So that was my reasoning for it. If I was looking at this from a sheer number standpoint, I would say, yeah, hold off. The VTM is gonna kill plenty of animals. It's probably better to even have a bow for a little longer so you get more reps in with it. So again, this video is based solely on my opinions and my views and what I think and how I think this bow shoots. I wanna hear yours below. Let me know what bow you're going with for 2024 whether it's a Matthews, a Hoyt, a Prime, a PSE, a Bowtech, I wanna hear what bow you guys are getting. I love seeing people getting into archery. And again, you don't need the highest end bow to get out and enjoy the sport. So once again, if you made it to this point, appreciate you, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos on this Alpha X.